Hey guys and welcome to this video on Black Moon Lilith in astrology. I'm Cassandra, the Saffron Sage, helping you use astrology to evolve and in this video we're talking about Black Moon Lilith. The Black Moon Lilith will talk about what the point is, we will talk about the mythology, and then we'll go through what it means for the sign that you have Black Moon Lilith in, in your natal chart. So Black Moon Lilith is not a planet, it's not an asteroid, it is a point in space. It's called a lunar apogee, and it is the distance from the Earth to the furthest point on the moon's orbit. So the moon travels around the Earth in an elliptical orbit. It's not a perfect circle. So there is a point that ends up being further away from the Earth on that circle. And so Black Moon Lilith is that point in space. There is the Black Moon Lilith. And there's also the true black moon. So if you really want to get technical, you can look at both of these and see which one you feel resonates. But for the purposes of this video, just simply clicking Lilith in the chart on other objects in astro.com and seeing where it shows up in your chart, that is enough to get value out of these videos. So that being said, let's move on to the myth of Lilith. So Lilith was the true first lady before Eve even existed. Lilith was the first lady and she was in the Garden of Eden with Adam. And one of the stories I read says they were both created from the dust of the earth. And there are many different myths that talk about Lilith. There's not just one, so these differ. But the gist of the story is that she wanted to be on top. Adam said, no, you'll submit to me and she would not submit. And because she would not submit, she got kicked out. Some people say she left, some people say she got kicked out, but the sort of overarching theme here is that she was not accepted just for having the same desires that Adam had. I think it's so fascinating that this story isn't even told. And, and so again, here the myths d differ, but they all kind of basically curse her in some way or another. Um, one that I read said that she, her children would be cursed to die if she didn't come back to Adam. So we see the themes in this story of, you know, the masculine need for power and control and the feminine need to be wild and free and how those don't match up. So what does this mean in the natal chart? Lilith has, in my opinion, two meanings. Okay, so one meaning is that Lilith can be the shadow. So this can be an area of life where you tend to overdo it. You have maybe too much of this energy or the way that you express the energy wherever your Lilith is in your chart is like the shadow side of that sign, the negative side, the, the overindulgence. It can be where you feel like there's never enough. The second meaning of wherever your Lilith is, is the thing that people don't let you express, the thing that people get upset at you for expressing. And this may or may not be the energy of your sun, moon, or rising, depending on where Lilith is in your chart. But oftentimes, you can actually be embodying this energy in a normal, regular way, and people will not accept you for living that out even if it's balanced. And so it takes a little bit of self-knowledge, like true self-knowledge, true soul searching, to really be able to kind of parse out the difference with Lilith between where you possibly could be overindulging, where you could be, um, you know, never satisfied, versus where you are naturally embodying that energy in a balanced and healthy way, but it somehow rubs other people the wrong way, you know, just like Lilith in that story where she wasn't really doing anything wrong. She just said no once, and that was enough to get her cast out of basically society and demonized for the rest of her life. So this is the story in our own lives where we have those sort of archetypes, those themes play out, even if they're not as extreme, right? So we might not be cast out of society, but people around us might not approve for certain things. And, you know, that has ripples and layers of effects. So let's now get into what Lilith means in your sign. Hey guys, all right, let's talk about Lilith in Gemini. So when Lilith is in the sign of Gemini, Gemini has this natural curiosity. So on one hand, 
For people with Lilith here, you could find that your curiosity is never satisfied. Like there's never enough information and this can show up in a few different ways. But one of them is just like always wanting to know more, always wanting to learn more, or even simply just in your relationships kind of feeling like you don't know enough or feeling like you want to know more. There's a feeling with Gemini, it's about knowing facts, not understanding the deeper meaning of things. So this can even show up for some people as sort of like an insecurity if you don't know every single fact and a hard time like letting things go based on the feeling of things, okay? So this can be like uh, in a conversation, if you don't know something, you wanna go look it up right away instead of just like having a regular conversation. And so um, it can show up like that, where it's like there's this almost like obsessive need to like know something. Uh, another way Lilith and Gemini can show up is there's like a busyness here. You know, there's a busyness with Gemini, like a busy mind, a need to go back and forth, a need to always be thinking about things, always be um, exploring something mentally. There's a need with Gemini for that. But when this becomes out of balance, it's this can actually be someone who's really nosy, someone who just has to know every single thing about every single person, otherwise you don't feel okay. Keep in mind that this is gonna be on a spectrum and you might fall at one point on that spectrum of extreme or not so extreme, just depending on other stuff in your chart. Another challenge for Gemini that we just can't go without talking about is the sort of stereotype Geminis get for being two-faced. And so this comes from Gemini being the twins and Gemini needing to talk and have conversations. And you could find that you go say one thing to one person and then you have a totally different conversation with another person because like Gemini doesn't really need to come to a point of understanding. Gemini is fine with, so is Libra, fine with seeing this side and seeing this side. So a Gemini can go have a conversation with someone about this side and be totally happy and then go have a conversation about the opposite side with someone else and be totally happy. But then those two get together and they find out that you said that to her and that to him and now you're in trouble. <laughs> so people with Lilith and Gemini can have situations like this where are fine with flowing with whatever the conversation leads to and the people around you are wanting to hold you to one thing and you are not the kind of person who wants to be held to one thing. You wanna just be able to show up, say whatever, and go somewhere else and say whatever there and not have to sort of be consistent in what you say or what you think. You need to be able to change your mind and the worst sort of manifestation of this is people around you feeling lied to because they took what you said at face value and they found out you said something else that meant the opposite in some other situation. So this is one way that shadow side can show up and really this can actually come down to just telling people what they wanna hear. Um, because Gemini is really good at that. Gemini is a great salesperson. They're really good at kind of um, getting to mentally, like understanding where the person is coming from so they can sort of say the thing that person needs to hear to buy that thing or to whatever. And so this is where the real shadow comes out of like manipulation with Gemini of like being able to tell someone exactly what they want to hear so that you get what you want out of the situation. Um, so that is the shadow side of Gemini, Lilith and Gemini. So then when we're talking about the aspect of Lilith where um, people will reject you for expressing this energy, this is probably going to show up more with your desire to understand things, to learn, to communicate. People might just not like hearing you say things sometimes. People might just say, you shouldn't say that. Or somehow in other ways, tell you you're wrong for speaking. You are wrong for asking questions. You are wrong for wanting to know more. You are wasting your time on facts. You are too busy reading books to get into real life. You know, just don't believe everything you read in those books. You shouldn't believe everything you read on the internet. If you have Lilith and Gemini, people might say things like this to you. This might be how people react to you um, when they are sort of triggered by that energy because wherever Lilith is in our chart, that is the area that other people are the most likely to reject us for expressing. So then you can look to the house where Gemini is to see more details on that. 
And also you can book a reading with me if you want more information on your Lilith or your purpose, your direction of life, are you on the right path, all that kind of stuff. That's my specialty. So you can click the link below to check that out as well. And I will see you guys in the next video.